Today is Wednesday, September 11th, 2024. The time is 7.03 p.m. I'd like to call the Finance Personnel Committee meeting to order. Myself, Mike Capper is present. Chris Dubay. Donnie Kern. No public comments. Anybody in the audience? Uh, we'll review the minutes from August 7th and the September 4th meetings. Make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second. Second. Any discussion all in favor? Aye. 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 Library report, Christina. I'm sorry, Mike. I think we have to review the. Did you review that? Did both? you do for the make a motion for both? Yes, for both of both uh, minutes as presented. Sorry. You're muted, Christina. Okay. We're ready for you. Sure. A um, couple different things kind of going in here. One thing that I, I mean, they're self-evident, some of the programs that are in the library report. But one thing I do want to highlight um, is we're working, the library is working on some oral histories and um, we're recording. I think we have about seven or eight community members who have been recorded just sharing different stories. Um, Nancy Vanoss was recorded today, just her personal experience growing up at St. Anne. And then we have one already loaded on our website and we've shared it through Facebook and such that is um, a relative of like the Legrandor family that had several businesses in town. In um, this one was on the mortuary service. So it's just like a little four minute video. And this project was funded by the um, Somerset Community Foundation. So those are up and coming. We expect to have more of those by the end of the year too. So, um, and then last night we had a program with, on American Kestrels. A woman from in the Eau Claire area at Nature Center there came and did a presentation and about uh, 40 people attended that program. So, I don't know if you guys have any feedback, questions about the library, any programs that we have going on too. So anything we can do to help? Um, right now, I think we're okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But let me know if you guys have any ideas or things that you want to see for sure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Impact B report. Yes. So that's not you. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, geez. Do you need an agenda? I, I do have I just didn't print one out. But well, if you haven't printed out, I'll take it. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, Looks like there's been two, two two new ones from Capstone, yeah. so we're up to fifteen for the year. And that's um, the new development. Fine bill. Mm -hmm. Do you know when they expect to break ground on that foundations for those? know where we're at from last year at this time i would assume we were more like 60 or so at the same time uh, i think we had 40 43 or 44 total we're roughly year. roughly a third of what we were from last year so far year to date yeah. for the discussion on that or questions? Not at this point in time. Department head meeting report, Andrea. Um, we haven't had one yet this month. I'm hoping to schedule one either next week or the week after. Okay. 
Will that be when you will that be when you guys discuss kind of the budget stuff too or yeah. or okay. Yeah. Yeah. So would that be ready by maybe in October? Yeah. 2024 budget to date and fund balances. Thing looks pretty good to be. Questions on anything? The money that we were going to be receiving from the state um, as extra funding, is that uh, coming in this year? I haven't seen that yet. Or is that going to be at the latter part of this year? Um, so that is through the state shared revenue. And um, we get two lump or two lump sums, one in April, I believe it is, and then the rest of it in November. So if you look under the revenue state shared uh, taxes, um, that's in the hundred or is that? Uh, it's on paid fund um, just below special assessment revenue headline. Yep. Oh, I forgot you don't have a paper, a paper copy. So, so far we've received $45,852 and the remaining $259,829 will be in November. Okay. Uh, you had mentioned there, there, is there a possibility of us not getting that, that revenue next year because we weren't um, at the proper mill rate? That, that's separate. That's the expenditure, expenditure restraint program. Oh, okay. That would be an additional amount that would be included in that state shared revenue. So, but we won't qualify for that. Because we because we weren't we our mill rate wasn't high enough, correct? Correct. Okay. I'm trying to understand that. That's why I'm asking these questions. <laughs> <laughs> and how much are we looking to lose on that? Uh, it's, it varies, but uh, last year it was 36000 38000 I'd have to go back and look um, to get you the exact number. So between thirty and 40000 is a safe yep. number? Okay. Yep. And we won't be seeing that next year in correct. 2024, correct? 2025. Or, I'm sorry, 2025? Yep. That was my only questions. Chris? Nope. Are you ready now? <laughs> sure. Unfinished business discussion, possible recommendation, impact fee needs assessment. All right. So um, I have a draft of the report. Uh, I did this last month. We did uh, discuss it at Public Works. The, the water and the transportation portion of it. Um, I did get some feedback from, from Andrea. Uh, some good feedback about uh, fixing up the darn table of contacts and putting some page numbers so you can, <laughs> you can all sing out of the same hymn, all right? Mm -hmm. So I have done that and um, I got a, some other minor tweaks. And if we have some minor tweaks this evening or, you know, I'll, I can get that out yet this week with the page numbers and everything else, uh, you know ahead of your your board meeting or what have you if you know so that's what i kind of envisioned for going forward uh the, the needs assessment you know, you've been collecting them since 2001 the last time it was updated it was 2010 and so it, with the uh the core or the comprehensive plan just recently being updated it was a good time to do it so whoever i don't know if it was you andrea pushing for that but it was it was good you know i think in the Upcoming years, you probably should you should pull this out once or once every year or every other year to see how you're doing and tweak it, because um, things change and you know it was quite challenging, frankly, to figure out what was reasonable for say the police station because you know that you recently had that 
assessment report done, but I don't think you ever really finalize, you know, what direction you're exactly going. And, you know, so it was, and, you know, in regards to the police number two, you know, that, that increased, you know, fairly considerably from, from uh, 2010. And in general, uh, you know, you more or less spend 10 years, I mean, more or less, you know, double for the, the residential house. Also moving forward, um, some kind of went down and up and stayed the same. But I, you know, I think it's it's reasonable numbers. We had a much uh, bigger number in there for the water, but based on the feedback from Public Works, uh, we we modified that somewhat to get it more in line with you know more for you know more in line with you know your neighbors to be cost competitive. And, you know, I don't know how in detail you want to go through this report, but, uh, you know, in speaking with the, the water main, there was a, you know, there was a water um, system needs study kind of done separately from this. Uh, it was, it was done kind of concurrently with this study. And um, some other feedback I got from Andrew is, you know, maybe incorporating more of that language into here. You know, so it's just or referenced it. You know, so pe future people looking at this know where some of that data came from. And, and with the, you know, and, and so you know, with the anticipated, and the other thing about revisiting this every couple of years is, you know, things can change so quickly in this town now that things seem to be moving, and you know, all of a sudden, you, know, you double the amount of uh, households coming in here. You know. You know, the cap plan had anticipated the crystal ball populations, but that could that could swing very you know, wildly based on what in reality happens. So where did it where did we come? I'm trying to find in this there's a lot of pages here. In uh the police, I seen the fire was at 192, right? Um, but where's where are we at with the, the library and police? Well, if you want to just the easiest thing to probably do is go to the very last page, chapter 10 recommendations. And, and if you get your, your red I got you. Out, I got you. Get your red pen out. That, that total dollar amount should be $3,945.34. So it's actually one on more. One. This page, it has a comparable with current and proposed. Oh, there you go. It's two pages prior. Page 24, if you have numbers like I do. <laughs> well, Donnie's looking at on. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, okay. uh, so ch chapter 8, 8.2, impact fees. Yes. Yeah. 3,945.24, right? Yeah. yeah. So fire is uh, 57, police is 192. No, oh, okay. I'm sorry, no. was. Got it. Okay. Yep. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. But, you know, I. It, it makes a lot of sense when you think about if you're building new for a, for like a police station or see all because basically in the last five years municipal buildings have doubled in price at least so you know it's 20 million dollars that's crazy right we got a million dollar fire uh engine that they want they want to i think it's a uh, uh yeah the fire engine that they want to replace now too so you know, so more or less all the numbers, you know, came from the comp plan for population projections and, and that sort of thing. You know, the water main was some discussions with your staff and myself about, you know, where that's going. Uh, the transportation was staff and myself kind of talking through that. Uh, the library had input on what, what they saw coming up in the future here. And then, and then you know, we reached out to obviously to the fire chief and, and the police chief for, for their respective data and that information. So, so how do we go about how do we go about recommending adoption of this stuff and, and what's the next steps? Well, yeah, in the, there are some revisions, you know, that Andrew and I talked about. I don't know if there's additional revisions or, or things you want to discuss in this study or any any concerns. I guess I'd like to have a little time to go through it a little more, but I guess my main question would be, how are we sitting infrastructure wise for the new development and possible future development for 
the infrastructure costs or in, infrastructure or our water tower or sewer capabilities. Yeah, and so if you look at um, the chapter three of the water, and if you go to uh, section 3.5, there's a there's a table mid page there water system improvements okay. and so what you do is you have your impact fees uh, cover the cost of the oversized so you know the developers paying for that eight, first eight inches and then if you need a, a larger pipe to serve exist you know you know additional uh, folks you know the oversizing is covered by the impact fee uh, there's a a need for a booster station and a pressure reducing valve, uh, essentially to serve south of the railroad tracks, because you're meeting pressures now, but you're very close to not meeting them. You know, it's the pressure should be between 35 psi and 100, and where you're now, like at that 39 psi. So, as you grow, you know, you're gonna you're gonna run into a problem there. And so, what we did is we looked at the existing number of residential equivalent units and then the projected and you know the projected ones are comprised 19 percent of of that overall number and so we, we put the cost of that the booster station the prv 19 percent of it is how we came up with the portion of covering the impact fees likewise the water tower cost you know so that's going to be coming down the road too how far down the road is a three point five million dollar water tower? Twenty uh, years. Twenty years was it? Yeah, twenty yeah. years. Yep. That was in that supplemental study. It was. Yep. The only question I had is that uh, you know on that booster station that we had talked about, I know in our, they were pushing that out to twenty thirty. Um, is that going to be? Is the the cost associated with that needs assessment? going to be right at replacing it uh, or, or I should say, uh, you know, purchasing that in 2030 versus uh, we were looking a couple of years out, weren't we on that? Yes. So um, the original recommendation I think was uh, within five years, we needed to look at that booster station and, and we're talking 2030, which is going to be, you know, well, probably, a little more than five years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's it's kind of right in line there. You know, it's okay. right about that five, and that's something we can monitor too. I mean, the the purpose of that uh, that supplemental water needs thing was to determine whether or not what to do with the water tower, right? right? And it was decided you want to keep it, you want to paint it. It's not going to be covered by needs. It's a maintenance item. So, but it gets you. Lives you a long way around, you know. And again, as you grow, and you know, maybe if if a bunch of improvements happen, you know, greater than anticipated to the north, you know, maybe you gotta, you know, readjust your study of things. But and the cost to paint, I think, it is about a quarter million. Yeah, three three quarters of a million. Three quarters of a million. Three quarters of a million to paint. Yeah. It was yeah, a, it's a, more than six six hundred six hundred sixty five thousand, if I remember right. It's ridiculous. I'm so old now because I remember the rule of, luck, of thumb in the early '90s was a buck a gallon to build a water tower, and you know now you're spending six hundred sixty thousand to paint a two hundred thousand gallon tank. But you know what they have to do is, you know they have to they have to curtain it all, they have to sandblast it clean. You know and it's inside, outside. There are some other safety improvements, but it's not cheap to paint. Things and that's why you see a lot of communities going to that composite, like you have with the the concrete base and the the steel top, because of the cost of repainting. But they're three point five million dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if it's at say thirty nine psi right now, and then we add another probably hundred homes and in that development is that going to drop it way down where we're going to need that booster sooner than later or how well that's kind of that five-year projection you know and we'll you know we'll need a couple years lead time so it's something we monitor on an annual basis you know where things are at and 
then at the appropriate time, you know, we'll, we'll come forward with a recommendation that you guys have to get going on it. Now, one of the things that's, you know, if you said, you know what, quality of life, let's just build it now and give these people great pressure. <laughs> you can do that, but you can't uh, get state revolving funds for that. You need, I think it's yeah, need 10 it. homes below 30, 35. You need 10 angry citizens coming in here complaining right. to you. And then two years later, you can fix it using or you know, one angry fire department because there wasn't enough pressure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but then again, you won't. So that's that's kind of the balancing act. Of when is the right time? Right. It's probably not this year. You're doing the water tower next year, but you know it's coming, and so hopefully you, it's 2030. And and Chuck, you had a lot of input in this, or was it more of somebody from your office? Uh, I had, you know, I'm a. I was the sole author on the water and the transportation, so blame me. No, I'm not blaming. No, 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 no. no. Uh, but the other ones, I had, I, I, I did get some assistance from a planner, you know, because I was, I was starting to feel a little bit over my head, and and you know, and so. Uh, was there anything that really kind of jumped out and said, "We're behind on this, or we need this real soon"? Well, the infrastructure stuff's easy. You know, the library stuff is just kind of, you know, what what do they what are the guidelines for you know how big a library should be? Yeah. yeah. That's a world end if you don't meet the minimum recommendations for a library. No, right. Uh, you know, it's it, the, the real challenging, like I alluded to before, was the police station. You know, what is really gonna happen there? What decisions are you gonna make in the future? Because the last thing you want to do too is collect a bunch of money and, and not spend it. You have yeah. to give it back. You have to give it back. Yeah. Yeah, and that you know, and that's so it's you know that's the catch twenty two. So. Uh, so, reading through the EMS part of it, it looks uh, it's a very conservative number, and I think they did a really good job of putting that together. So help me understand here, little Chuck. So say the the police department portion, say it's a thousand dollars of it per whatever how long do we collect before we can actually build the needs well you could you can use needs and you can build beforehand and just you know you have money in those accounts now i don't know if i mm -hmm. if i spelled it out in each section but, <clears throat> but it's you know it's but for this new growth this is why you're building it so, so being in being in Somerset with the growth we're having now and about possible future growth, do you think this thing is going to good, be good for a year, five years? I think it should be revisited every two years. Revisited every two. Yeah, and it should be a lot longer than that. I think we have a pretty good handle, but again, you start talking PRVs and you know if something major was to change, you know maybe you decide, you know. Because of all this development to the south, let's build a water tower, and then we don't need that PR. You know, maybe we've got to do you know some other sort of improvements that are similar. But, um, that's answering your question or not? Yeah. But you know, it's just something. If we look at it, we pull it out every couple of years, and you know, Bob and I can certainly do that. With Andrea and 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 just say, or, or maybe you want some input as well, just to say, well, it looks like things are kind of going as anticipated. Or we're growing a lot faster, so you know maybe we need to move some projects up, or you know, maybe you just you know the police department decides you know you get you develop some other cheaper method, whatever that would be, a, a joint facility with the county or something, you know. You know and, and there, so after that development's done, there's not probably not going to be a lot of growth to the south anymore because you go past the highway, there's already all the Houses on the other side of the highway in the township, um, so the more of the growth would probably go to the north. Yeah. Does that stuff get taken into consideration? Yeah, as yeah. Far as... I mean, a lot of that comp planning stuff is what this is the project growth projections are based on. Okay. So it's it's really aligning with that document. So we you know, we don't want to we didn't want to we get in trouble if we start saying you know we're the comp plan says one thing and this says another. So a comp plan gets done every five years, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So 
I thought it was 10. Or no, 10. The corp gets every five years, yeah. 10 on the contract. Okay, so it's every 10. So in the, if, we, as well. the only question I have is if we, if we exceed our comp plan, do we have to revise that? Like uh, we had anticipated a certain amount of uh, uh, homes to be built and, and, uh, and in the water aspect, we mimicked uh, and, and kind of echoed that. Uh, if we all of a sudden blew past that in our comp plan, do we have to redo our comp plan in addition to uh, uh, changing our needs assessment? I think you should revisit it and make those decisions. You know, I don't think it, statutorily just required every 10 years, but, you know, you, in 2018, you revised the future land use map uh, to change some things. So, you know, right, but right. Or unless you'll, you'll likely modify it or do some tweaks to it. I mean, do we, I guess my question is, do we have to in order to change our needs assessment? Because we kind of mimicked what, our, our, our you know, needs assessment was in what regards to water, uh, you know, uh, as in in line, our water needs assessment was in line with what our comp plan said. So if we blew past our comp plan, do we have to change our comp plan in order to, uh, to change our needs assessment? No, I mean, the comp plan is a kind of a snap in time as far as some of those population projections and everything else. So okay. They're, they're two standalone documents. It's a good question. Dave, now that I understand what you're asking, Donnie, right. but so no, we can revisit that, and if the growth's different than the comp plan, we'll, you know, we'll just have to document it and what that's based on. I just didn't. Plan. I didn't know if our statute authority, you know, under the state statutes, required us to to have that in there, you know, to kind of mimic our our comp plan. No. Okay. All right. That was my only question. Did you say we need to redo the future land use in 2020? No, we did in 2018. You oh. know, it wasn't the 10 years wasn't up. Okay. I was just giving an example where gotcha, just you did in the past that. what you, yeah, did that. How often does that need to be done, do you think? Oh, it was what predicated that was, I think, just figuring out the uh, the cord land and, you know, some of the, so, you know, that, that annexation, getting that land in and getting it reflected to the, so other so it was guided to what you wanted to see right you know so somebody didn't do something that you didn't want there exactly yeah. so uh, we're looking to change these numbers other than uh some requests that andrea had made uh as far as change numbers and and index and stuff like that for the report is there any other substantial changes that were made in the report that or that need to be uh, done before it goes to the board for approval and what's our next steps after that yeah i will uh you know there you know some of the typos that formatting and uh some editing to the language on the water to do a better job of referencing that 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 water need study um i'll make those changes i'll get a, a revised copy to uh to the city or the, to the village and and if Unless you have any big substantial other changes, you know, I'll have that, I'll have a PDF copy of that. You know, I can do that, you know, tomorrow or the next. And and then, you know, I don't know. I can also get you paper copies as well. Uh, and I don't know how soon you'd want them if you want those to go out in the you want paper copies to go out in the council packet, or is that something I just provide at the board meeting? If we have the PDF for uh, them to review before the meeting, if you bring paper copies the night of, that would be fine. Okay. Uh, uh, do you want, does everybody want one? Do I, do we want? I would like one. Another 10 of them? Yeah. 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 The, the PDF later. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to have that yeah. Yep. So then, if I remember correctly, we have to then have a public, public hearing. hearing. Like this document has yeah. to be available to the public for so many days, and then there's a public hearing, and then they go into effect. Yes. So, yeah, I'll, I'll have to revisit that. Those okay. and look that far ahead. But so yes. probably October. So, so what on your agenda for? You should, uh, yeah. Order that hearing. 
for your next meeting. Mm -hmm. Would you do that at a finance or would you do that at the board meeting? Board meeting. Board meeting. Okay. Is it 30 day notification? It's it's 30 day notice. Yep. It's a, I think it's a schedule uh, or it's class C notice. Right. Calendar today. So um, if that gets approved next Tuesday, it would go into the paper for the 26th. So 30 days would be October 20th. Well, that's a Saturday. October 26th. So that's that's the earliest you could have it. Mm -hmm. And so your next board meeting what the the um, the meet the uh, Andrew the, the meeting would have to be October twenty sixth. Is that what you're saying then? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Or or, or 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 later, or does it have to be or on later. that? Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. So no no earlier than okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So you could yeah. do you could do it in November then. Yeah. I know we expected this in May, but it looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. There was, there was a lot of moving parts. Yeah. So. yeah was... Thank you. I appreciate your points. <laughs> I think you did a really nice job on it. Do you want to recommend to the board? Yep. I would make a recommendation to uh, submit this impact need, fee needs assessment uh, to the full village board for approval. Second. Your first and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 You know, as far as calling that public hearing, is there anything you need from me? Oh. You know, Paul will will, Paul will let us know, but I think they I think that has to be this this has to be put out, you know, this report needs to be out for that period of time too, right? You know, and I guess, you know, you know, if uh, if you're gonna adopt it. Be a resolution, and you want me to do that? You know, if you could mm -hmm. look, you know, yeah. yeah. Thanks again for all your hard work on this, Chuck. Yeah, thank you, Chuck. Oh, it was good. You can really get your get immersed and get your head into it. Mm -hmm. Did you find? Thanks it? for reading it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things I produce that I wonder if other people read it. So. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you find anything out that you were surprised at when going through? No, but you just, it, you know, it does get overwhelming when you start thinking about all the costs and all the things that need to be done. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all that's the costs have gone up. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, it's all over. Thank you again, Chuck. Thank you. Maybe I'll, I'll sneak out and see me to stick it out. If you want to. You want to sneak to. out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you have to see. You can just walk up. Discussion possible recommendation of leasing a village lot. This was on from last month. So I think we turned that right. Pardon? Uh, leasing village lot. I think you had put this on the agenda. Uh, yeah. Well, it was put on the agenda because uh, um, the question was whether or not we were going to uh, uh, be leasing the village lot or or basically prohibiting anybody from utilizing the village lot uh, for anything right. unless they had a lease, right? Can I stop you for just one second before Chuck leaves? Chuck, you been able to do the uh, concept designs at all for the village lot? Uh, I'm not sure where that's at. I don't have to talk about that. Okay. I'll give you an update. All right. Thank you. Bob, Bob, Bob's been working directly with them too, so he may know off the top of his head, but I'll give you an update. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. Sorry to cut you off, Donnie. I just wanted to ask Chuck that before he left. No, that's fine. That 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 was why it was put out there. Is that we had a originally had leased the a portion of that lot for um, you know uh, a business to transact business there for a period of time, and 
And uh, the real question is, are we going to continue going forward with something like that? Or, or is this something that we're going to say no? Or is that something that we need to look at uh, down the road? Um, that, that's what I, I, my, my personal opinion is, I think, you know, now that, that it, the lot is empty, that it be put up for, you know, what we need to try to see if we can sell it or redevelop it or something on that lines, rather than leasing uh, and, and allowing, uh, you know, people to just go in and, and set up camp there on a weekend and sell stuff because they got a, a vendor license. I, um, I asked Tasha to add a closed session at our village board meeting for an economic development update from Bob. Maybe we can discuss that as well to see where he's at with getting a concept plan. Right now, right now we don't have anything to really sell. I mean, the land is there, but we're gonna put together a couple different concepts and then there's discussion of if we're gonna look at buying uh, surrounding buildings to, for future growth. Uh, would you be okay with uh, discussing that at, during his update? I'm perfectly fine with it. I just like at this point in time, my recommendation would be if we have lots that are uh, out there, we really shouldn't be uh, just letting anybody come in and and do anything on them unless unless uh, you know the village board gives them approval. I agree. That's my recommendation is that uh, if they want to come in and do something, it, parks use is different, but on the village lots that are open, we need to we need to kind of. Um, you know, I don't know if we if we put forth a, a an ordinance on that regards or or, or what we do, but uh, um, I, I I just think that if if the there's nothing right now, to my understanding, in the in the ordinances that prohibits uh, you know any business from doing any kind of work in the parking lot right across the street from the village hall. Well, it sounds like we'll be discussing it next week then. You said on uh, next week's close. Yeah, we can. We can talk about it then, I right. think. Yeah, okay. Can we just drop this from the agenda then? Or do we need a motion? We don't need a motion. We can just Hold move on, on from it. Um, and the other part too, Donnie, is we're into September now. So it's we're kind of past that season where people are even going to be really wanting to use it, I think. Well, there's nothing. I, I, I can't say, you know, on the weekends, you know, other than, you know, we've had some some, uh, you know, fundraisers from some nonprofits that have been there selling corn and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, there's nothing to say that uh, somebody doesn't have a vendor permit, doesn't want to, you know, um, want to set up shop there is my my question. And if they don't have the proper licensing, they don't have the, they, that we should really kind of prohibit them from uh, using uh, these lots uh, unless they have permission from the village. And then it's a matter of, I should say from the board. It's a matter of how do we, when they come in here, they get an application, who tells who, who monitors it, who's in charge of, of uh, policing it. Is it our police department or is it somebody else that we put in charge of it? I Let me see if I can, if I can get some uh, different types of uh, uh, language from like Hudson on what they do with their, their vendors and, and stuff like that as well. Maybe we might be able to mimic or mirror some of that, New Richmond or Hudson. Fantastic. Thank you, Don. Discussion, possible recommendation, election inspector and chief inspector pay rate. Um, there is a memo from Asia. I sent that out to you today, Don, too. Um, yeah. So, are you able to share your screen? I don't have. No, oh, I re I read it. I, I I read it. I was you know <laughs> my question my question on this is we tried to raise rates last year, and it was voted down, right? Okay. So and we recommended uh, that this committee recommended that those rates be increased, and it was uh, voted down. Now sure. I'm perfectly fine with putting forward this recommendation to the board. Uh, again, uh, I just, my concern is that it doesn't get rec, uh, you know, voted down. Mm -hmm. All we can do is try. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. 
but you know, surrounding the major surrounding communities, which um, our elect election inspectors can go to other municipalities. They don't have to only the chief election inspector has to be a, a resident, but right. everybody else they don't have to be a resident. So it's you know just right up the hill they're paying twenty five dollars over twice as much. Yeah, that it's hard to get people to. They, they, it's not they, that they're looking to make money on me, but you know it's it's an the, inconvenience of your time. The only issue that I have, or that I have a question on, I should say, is uh, uh, we set kind of our budget based on last year and the the response from the board at that time. So this is proposed to uh, come into this year. Is that going to affect the budget numbers? I actually looked at the budget numbers because I knew you were going to ask me. <laughs> well, you're yeah. starting to starting to read what I'm go, where I'm yeah. going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we've had um, less workers at the previous three elections than what was budgeted for. So we actually have the money to cover this the rate that Tasia is asking for for the November election. It's roughly thirty six hundred dollars, and we have thirty four hundred dollars in wages, and there's a uh, two thousand in expenses that haven't make a mo make a motion to me recommend uh, to the full board uh, adoption of the new village pay schedule for election inspector and uh, chief inspector pay rates. A second. Uh, my only discussion, and I'm all for it too, but my only discussion just because people were not able to share the screen is the town of Star Prairie's at $25 an hour for the inspector. Town, some town of Somerset's at $25 an hour for inspector. Um, both of those are at $30 an hour for the chief inspector. And the village of Somerset, we are at $11 an hour for the inspector and $13 an hour for the chief inspector. So I also uh, agree with the uh, yay on the on the motion. Myself, yes. And I wonder already... if I need to abstain, though. When I think about it, you can abstain. I, I was because you. That way, I can still serve. All right. So Donnie and I are a yes, and then one abstention. So, yeah. all right, motion passes go to go to the full board. Uh, discussion possible recommendation Buckthorn and underbrush clearing at the village park. This came from public works. Uh, can you speak to this? Well, I think it was more put forth for uh, cost to be established uh, at our budgeting. And uh, we got budget meetings scheduled on the next items. So I'd like to see if we can incorporate this, uh, you know, this amount in. Well, the public works just uh, took action tonight to uh, make a request of the chair chairman, you, to uh, request if you can schedule a meeting of the whole to discuss uh, village parks and upgrades and uh, the village park um, sometime, you know, in the next month or so, so that we know what we're looking at for a cost associated going into uh, and you know uh, you know budgeting meetings and such. So that's going to be something that I'll be putting forth in a, as a request to you for a meeting of the whole. So right now at this point in time, I think that buckhorn and underbrush is for you guys to look at and understand the cost associated with with that. But um, uh, I don't think there's any. Uh, thing that we can do yet until we have a meeting of the whole to discuss the matter more. You're okay with the price. You just want to try to work it into the budget for next year. Well, I mean, price wise, I, I, you know, I'm not making a recommendation that we forwarded it to us on that. It was more for us all as a committee to look at uh, whether or not we want to incorporate um, those numbers into um, getting the, village park you cleaned know up. uh cleaned up a little bit and you know i mean there's there's two different ways that we could go about it i guess what they're saying 
and uh, and you know Brandon had taken the time to get these uh, these quotes and and uh, we can definitely look at that. There's uh, definitely a work in order there with the Village Park. Um, they're getting some redesigning and stuff done, so that's um, it's definitely something uh, where I think at this point in time, you know, um, we could we could set these aside until we get this meeting of the whole, and that we will know whether or not we're going to need to utilize this or not. A question which i see three parcels which area does this cost reflect because i know some was done by other means well we had originally uh i believe they had set up uh in uh the board had approved one spot already on that uh let me find it here i'm not sure which area this is the map to. I was asking what the different colors meant. <laughs> if you'll notice, there is uh, the red areas on the map. Right. And then there's the green areas that are ones on the east side of the river and ones on the west side of the river. Mm -hmm. uh, the original uh, spot, I believe, where they fenced everything off it was on the west side of the river and the green area that was very you know steep hilly area and they they fenced that off and and let the goats work into that area but there's still more to be done um brandon uh is willing to talk more about this um the real question is you have a cost of um uh, you know i believe it's a little under four let me pull up that number a little under four thousand four getting some of the br brush done with uh, machinery. Mm -hmm. And then there's, then there's also, sorry. 3950. Right. And then there's also the cost for uh, the goats. And I think where there is higher terrain and treacherous terrain for them to get machinery in, we might be able to look at that, uh, you know, that is an option. Um, but that the, my experience from this year was definitely a learning one that i noticed that that buckthorn doesn't get taken out as much as i thought that that they advertised uh and and uh, uh there needs to be some more work that needs to be done in order to ensure that 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 happens according to what they're advertising for the this goat um <coughs> goat they grazing green. then you have to go in and remove the actual trunch or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so this quote is the red areas then on the map? You're saying the green have already been cleared as much as possible with the goats? Just one second. Well, there's still more. There's to still a lot of buck for one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the best job. It does say area. It's, it, it, it does. It, you know, so there, there's much more to just this number once it's a one and done type thing. There's going to be an ongoing. This is just the start of the process to start getting some of the underbrush and everything cleaned up in that area prior to us, uh, you know, getting it, to, you know, redesigned or whatever. Um, if, if, uh, if the, the, local residents wish to have that you know done i'd like to Not... uh, step back for a second and go to the uh, election inspector i'm not sure if this is a big deal or not but since uh, chris is an election inspector and she abstained from it i would like to second your motion Mm. I'd like to second her, second uh, Donnie's motion that we. On the record, that's a good idea. Thank yeah. You. Okay. Uh, oh, I thought that that's what she, you did when she backed off. I thought Mike, you did second it. I thought. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, discussion for the 2025 budget meeting schedule. So uh, typically we have a couple meetings in October for um, the budget. And I 
thought I would ask you guys what dates work for um, you all instead of just picking dates. So, um, we are having a special meeting on the 8th, and then our regular meeting is the 9th. Um, are, the, are these already in the calendar? No. Um, they should be. Well, the 8th is not. That's the one that was scheduled at um, the last negotiation meeting. A special meeting is on the 8th, though. The regular meeting is on the 9th. Is that going to be when we will have hopefully have some budget numbers then? Yeah, so I think um, we'll have tentative numbers. So I think that first, the first question mark can be the 9th. Okay. Um, and then, wait, yes. And then uh, we have to, by, by ordinance, do we have to have uh, any more? Well, it all depends on if we have all the information and if the budget is balanced, then we can just rip our hands with it and send it off to the board. But um, it's quite often we don't have all the information and we need to have another meeting. So I thought we could tentatively schedule another meeting um, like that the week of the 21st or the last week in October um, because we do have to have the notice in the paper um, for the budget hearing. And I just realized, oh no, that's fine. Before the, it has to be um, two publications before the meeting. Andrew, we'd be approving the, uh, the, uh final budget at our normal board meeting on the 19th, correct? Yeah. Yep. And do we have to have uh, um, any time between the then and the 19th? You know, if, in other words, like the 13th, that would be our finance meeting. That would be our final, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? So, yeah. so technically, we have to be done by the 13th of November in order to get it approved on the 19th. Yep. Yeah. And so we start on the 9th of October, and I think we had two meetings prior to the 13th, if I remember right from last. Was so that correct? Yep. So in theory, we'd be looking at one on the 23rd and possibly the week of uh, uh, the 6th if we needed. Yeah, that's the election week. I don't know that I want to schedule. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Right that's after. True. Um, but we can certainly um, just pencil in the 23rd and if you guys are fine. That works. That, that way, works for me. Um, so I the 20, so we got October 9th, yeah. October 23rd. Yeah. And do you want to have it? the week before election if we need to, and that'll give you election week as kind of a, uh, you know, before the 13th then? Yeah. Well, we, we can put it on. We don't necessarily need it. Right. But we, if yeah. we put it on the 30th and everything's going good on the 23rd, we can say, ah, we'll, we'll finalize everything on the 13th. Okay. Yep. Does that make sense to everyone? Yep. Yeah, the only thing uh, you said, October 9th, are we still on for the, October 8th special meeting? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's for the contract. So that's just a closed session meeting. Oh, so the 23rd at 7? Uh, that's up to you guys. The 9th is our regular meeting, so that one would be at 7 because it follows public works. Um, what time is the one on the 8th? I'll put it in. The 8th is 6 o'clock. Yeah, eight to six. What time are we talking on the night? Then that'd be seven. Yeah, at seven. And, and the twenty third. Do you want to do that at six? I'm good at six. Sure, that looks for me too. Okay. Yeah. I'm good for six. Then also on the thirtieth. Same time. Okay. So, so the dates. Do you need any formal motion on this, or is it discussion? Our discussion good enough. 
I'll um, update the sheet and I'll send it to all of you and the department heads so they kind of have an idea too. And then I'll set up invites for the special meetings. Okay. And your department head meeting will be before the 9th, I assume? Yes. Okay. Future agenda items? I would, uh, I would like to entertain for next month's village board meeting to invite DJ and Live Nation to do like an after action kind of a report with them and the chief just to see how things went for them, anything uh, that we can all help each other improve on. Just so for the October meeting? For the October meeting. Would anybody have uh, any problems with that? No, sounds good. I'll uh, check with those guys and see if that works for them and get back to them. Okay. Any other future agenda items or Johnny can want to make the last motion. You're smiling. We're, trying to hear you. <laughs> We're waiting. <laughs> Move to adjourn. Second. Further discussion. All in favor. Aye. 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 Motion. You guys have a good night. Meeting is adjourned at 7.59 p.m. Okay. Oh,